This video is sponsored by Raycon. More on that later. Hi, I'm Jarvis and welcome back to my quarantine beard. A lot of people are telling me to shave it, but when I tried, it threatened to hurt my family. So my hands are tied. So we've spent a lot of time on this channel talking about animated stories that claim to be submitted by real people, but uh, are in fact uh, fake stories created by uh, giant content operations. So that's fun. But today I wanted to talk about stories that are probably submitted by real people, but just because they are submitted by real people doesn't mean they're true. Today we're talking about uh, this page that someone sent me on Instagram called Not Always Write Comics, which appears to be a cross between the fake animated stories have actually happened and a webcomic. What could go wrong? These comics appear to be an offshoot of a website called Not Always Write, which has apparently been around uh, for at least since 2013. I've never heard of it, but it reminds me of like FML. Does anybody remember FML where people would just like submit stories uh, about bad things that happened to them in their lives? Not always right. It provides a platform where people can submit stories where they complain about people in their lives that um, are, are not always right. So it's, it's in the name. What seems to be the problem, ma'am? I can't get into my email. What browser are you using? The internet. Okay, well, when you look at the internet, you're watching it through a window. What is written on the top border of that window? <laughs> no, I'm not looking at a window. I'm looking at the internet. People, people are crazy. <laughs> they're, they're not always right at all. This one's actually from 2011, so this website has been around for way longer uh, than I realized. Most of these stories are about people like working their jobs, dealing with customers who are rude or, or, or mean parents, people who are in the wrong. As I learned from uh, working at Yelp for a few years, anytime you let random people on the internet write something for the rest of the internet to see, you're gonna have a problem. These stories claim to be real, uh, they claim to be user submitted, but would a user embellish a story in which they come out the hero? No way, Jose. These are real. I've read a bunch of these stories and even though I agree that like the other person is in the wrong a lot of the time, the stories are really self-congratulatory and seem to only exist so that the person who wrote it could pat themselves on the back. So uh, with that said, let's get into the comics. I work at a school. I have a tattoo on my foot of a vine of ivy. Usually I hide it with my socks and shoes while working, but one day they get wet on the playground, so I take them off to keep from getting blisters. So uh, pretty relatable story so far. Is it raining? In which case, uh, don't be on the playground, especially not with those kids. Don't want anybody to catch a cold, but for the sake of the story, I'm just gonna assume it was some other water related mishap. While I'm changing shoes, a child notices the tattoo. I'm sorry, you brought a change of shoes <laughs> to school? I'm gonna stop uh, with the nitpicking. I'm just saying these details are not necessary. But anyway, uh, this, this girl's taking off her shoe and a kid walks over and he's like, oh, what's that? It's a tattoo. It's like a permanent drawing on your skin that you can get when you're 18. Can I touch it? Sure, it just feels like skin. I don't know why sure it just feels like skin is such an off-putting sentence to read. And also encouraging kids to touch your feet feels a little strange, but uh, just call me new fashion. <laughs> Several kids come over to touch my tattoo. Okay, well this is weird, but um, I guess it's fine because this person isn't in the wrong. They're the one narrating the story. So so someone else has to do something something wrong in this, in this comic. You should be ashamed. You're setting a bad example for these children. That could be a gang symbol or related to drugs like marijuana. It could be if it was a tattoo of a gang symbol or something related to marijuana, <laughs> but it's, it's not. You could say that about anything. Don't put that food in your mouth. It could be a gun. <laughs> it could be. Ma'am, it's just Ivy. What? I don't know anything about your drug symbols. This is highly unprofessional. I will be speaking to your boss advocating drugs like this. I think we found who's in the wrong and it's uh, Karen here. They don't want us to be on her side because she's got this haircut. And if they did, they would have uh, made her look different. You know this is a helicopter parent because she's apparently just hanging out at school on the playground with her kids. One of these kids even hers? Or, or, or is she 
just on the Karen patrol, looking out for drug advocates everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. Next time I'll be sure to hide my tattoo, but I assure you it has nothing to do with drugs or any illegal behavior. You'd better. I can't believe you would be allowed to work with kids. The mother bends over to pick up her daughter, and I see a pair of dolphins tattooed very low on her back, AKA a tramp stamp. Plot twist. Karen is a hypocrite. Couldn't have seen that coming. It's visible just above her jeans. Rightly or wrongly, these tattoos often have a negative connotation. I feel like that's a little like slut shamey, TBH. Karen's tattoo is also fine, but she is a hypocrite for judging someone with a tattoo. This is so not real though. You could have just been like, she also has a tattoo. What the heck, man? Instead, you've introduced this like hierarchy of like, well, her tattoo is a bad tattoo and my tattoo is just of Ivy, so. Um, so I'm the moral victor, I win. Nice dolphins, wink. Fucking got him. <laughs> In your face, Karen. Never, never saw that coming. Karen's so caught, caught red-handed. She's so embarrassed. Her kid's like, what mommy? What's happened? I've been, I've been found out. I'm an adult, don't you judge me. I mean, so is, so is this girl. She's working at the school. She has a tattoo. In most places you've gotta be at least 18 to have them. Oh, right, yeah, sorry. I get it now, it's Karen's, Karen's bad. <laughs> okay, I get, cool, sorry, bro. Do you think tattoos are unprofessional? Let us know. No? So this story is a great example of all of the components of one of these stories. Usually you've got like an entitled parent or customer or something, um, and someone else who <laughs> fucking owns them, shows them what's what. Damn, I'm pretty sure these, Comics are mostly about owning Karens, almost exclusively, and I don't know why. If you thought that one was a little silly and on the nose, um, it was, and they all are. Aloha, how are you today? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Could you talk in English, please? Oh, a, a racist. <laughs> this ought to be interesting, and a, Peep the, peep the haircut. You know she's not always right. I should also say, if it's not obvious, um, they're in Hawaii, which is located in the United States. You can see the little American flag. Um, it's right here on the, on the counter for some reason, just to like drive home the fact that they're in America. Hello, how are you today? Fine. We just flew here from America today. Okay, she doesn't know she's in America still. How does she not know? Either she doesn't know she's in Hawaii or uh, she doesn't know Hawaii is in America, and I don't understand either of those uh, scenarios. You did choose to go to Hawaii, right? How did you get this far without knowing that people in Hawaii speak English? Also, I feel like uh, having purchased a few things from stores in my day, I feel like there's a lot more talking happening in this interaction than would normally take place. I would like to purchase these items, please. No shit, you're at the counter with items. <laughs> No one has ever said that. That'll be $25.85. Notice the uh, American dollar sign here, just to drive home uh, that we are in America still. Do you take American money here? I only have American money. I've not been able to get to currency exchange yet. So she knows about currency exchange, but she doesn't know that she traveled domestically. I know for a fact that there are people in America that don't know that Hawaii is a state that is in America. Uh, but those people are not in Hawaii. <laughs> they didn't travel there without the need for a passport with knowledge of currency exchange and customs and not know that they are still in the same country that they uh, departed from. How did you get to Hawaii? Th were you blindfolded? And like, uh, I don't know, earmuffed or, or prevented from hearing the uh, pilot say, we're in Hawaii. I commend that they're trying to like take down bigotry and stuff, but like this is a weird way of doing it. Why make such an unbelievable story that kind of undercuts the, the point you're trying to make here? Like I'm also anti people who say, speak English please, but this shit happens in America with Spanish speakers all the time. So just like use that example. There's another one about entitled parents, but instead of being a tattoo hater and a tattoo haver, this parent just wants their kid to be able to use the Velcro wall. Lots kids are lined up at the Velcro wall wanting to ride. Damn, look at them. That's, that's lots kids right there. Big lots kids. Ride the wall, w waiting to ride. <laughs> Do you ride a wall? I think these kids are sticking to the wall <laughs> to be a little pedantic. It's not a ride. 
God. We have about five minutes until our troop leaves. One of the parent, our troop? <laughs> The word choice in this is confusing. Who is writing these? I, I did, I, I I wanted to mention also that the like language in these stories is very strange. Like there's another story about a man uh, and an old lady where he introduces himself. <laughs> Let me find it. I am a teenage Chinese male, but born and raised in Dundee, Scotland. <laughs> All right. I have the local accent and cultural awareness. This one just sounds like a, like an alien wrote it who's pretending to be human. I have the local accent and cultural awareness, fellow humans. But anyway, back to the wall at hand. I want my son to ride this ride. Ma'am, I don't think there's enough time for all these kids to, I don't care if he's the last one. I want him to ride this ride. Why? <laughs> my son has had a lifelong dream of being suspended in midair by a Velcro jumpsuit. and You're not gonna ruin that, damn it. This story is a great example of the let me talk to a manager vibe that um, a lot of these stories give off. Also, how long does it take to ride the Velcro wall? I, I presume you, you just stick to it for a bit and there's not much else that can happen. You can peel yourself off of the Velcro wall. I truly can't imagine that it takes that long. Also, is this a carnival? Like, where are they? I know there are troops. This ride is gonna shut down in about five minutes. There isn't enough time for, he can be the last in line then. I mean, yeah, that does, that's not really related to what she said. He can wait in line, but probably won't be able to. Fine. Mother walks away and returns sometime after the ride is shut down and all the kids are turned away. Hey, hey, I thought we agreed my child could get on the ride. Lady. You left. What are you talking about? She said the ride was closing in five minutes and then you dipped out. That's not what we agreed to. Well, put the ride back up so he can ride it. I'm sorry, but we can't do all that for one child. Where's the kid in all of this? I've, I've seen him express no desire to ride the wall, which makes me wonder uh, why his mom cares so much. Let me ask you something, Karen. Do you really want to ride the Velcro wall? Are you living vicariously through your son because you're too big? Have you always had the dream of being suspended two to three feet off the ground? Nothing crazy. <laughs> you can tell us, Karen. Your anger speaks volumes. Why not? You're just being f effing stubborn. If you have any complaints, you can speak to the clown over there. Have a nice day. There's a clown now? <laughs> He's just like, what's up? I'm a clown. <laughs> I don't want to talk to any D, -D clown. Oh. <laughs> Uh, damn clown. Uh, I thought he was a dick clown for a second there. Now I can't unsee t dick clown. I don't want to talk to any clown. That clown is my boss. Damn. The clown's just like, I'm a clown, but also the boss. <laughs> what a misdirection. I was expecting this comic to own Karen, but instead they just owned this poor clown. <laughs> dick clown didn't ask for this. He was just minding his own clown business in which he's the boss. Is it becoming clear that people are not always right? Because before reading these, I totally thought they were. As you've probably noticed by now, a lot of the people in these comics work in service jobs, which is cool because uh, a lot of people um, in service positions are disrespected as like a daily uh, part of their job. And these comics serve to like stick it to the customer uh, when you couldn't otherwise do that for fear of losing your job maybe. But in all honesty, it just comes off as wish fulfillment uh, and, and it's funny. My favorite subsection of these comics is uh, entirely about <laughs> tech support, which is full of unreasonable and stupid people that don't exist. Welcome to internet support. My name is Tegan. How can I help you? Oh, hello, sweetheart. I already hate this guy. I didn't realize I'd reached the reception. Ah, a sexist. Could you please connect me to internet support? This is internet support. What can I do for you? I want help with a technical problem. I can't talk to you. I want to talk to a man. Okay, so this story is about owning the uh, human personification of sexism. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. This woman is the only person who could help him. And then... She has to, he has to be grateful that, that he wants to help her. So she, he gets put in his place. And then, uh, and then a, a fist bump happens. Got him. These comics are woke is what I'm saying. Why is it always the man in the wrong in your comics? Oh no, yeah, why is that? Hello, tech support, how may I help you? This is fun for me because I know things about, about tech support. Um, I used to support tech for a career. Kind of. I can't access your network. Uh-oh. 
That, that can't be. It appears that this man is on a train, so that probably has something to do with it. And there's an anarchy symbol on the train for some reason. Just a little atmosphere. Where are you currently, sir? I'm traveling in between San Francisco and San Jose. I've done that. I know what train this man is on. He's on the Caltrain. Joke's on you, not always, right? I can, I can really fact check ya. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but there's maintenance being done in that zone. You'll have to wait 20 minutes until you are back in a working zone. What? <laughs> this train ride is like an hour and a half. Like this man cannot wait 20 minutes uh, for, for service because he has very important job, I, I guess. What can I do? Just wait until the train is a bit farther on and you'll have connection again. This is terrible. Where's your manager? What does he even expect could possibly happen. <laughs> you know, for a businessman that works in the heart of Silicon Valley, this guy has a pretty weak understanding of how the world works. Uh, well, actually, I guess that makes sense. Sir, it's 4 a.m., so I'm the only one working? That seems to, to be a, a plot point often. Like, the person, <laughs> they're like, can I talk to a manager? And it's like, I am the manager. Or it's like, I'm the only one you're allowed to talk to, because uh, this story uh, can't get any longer. We can't add too many more characters to it. Um, so you're stuck with me. Also, this train doesn't run at 4 a.m. I know the train schedule. <laughs> this guy seems to have pretty good cell phone service on the train. Just set up a hotspot, my guy. Look, I have some important stuff to watch here. Can you fix the internet? She just tells him to wait 10 minutes, uh, but he doesn't understand that there's no internet in his zone. Can't you move the satellite so I do have internet? With his little cutesy face. Mm, can't you move the satellite, please? You know that there are satellites, but you think that they can, you, you, what? <laughs> also, I love that this uh, tech support person has uh, a Rubik's Cube and a Dalek on their desk, so there's like some nerd representation going on. <laughs> and Baby Yoda is there. <laughs> is Baby Yoda the manager? Uh, excuse me, miss, can I talk to Baby Yoda? So uh, she just tells him to wait 10 minutes because she's gonna move the satellite, but get this, that's just how long he had to wait until he moved into a working zone. So she owned him, ha <laughs> ha. This guy's dumb. So we've covered racist and sexist people. Um, and just for good measure, uh, let's work in some homophobia. <laughs> just to hit the woke trifecta. <laughs> I'm gonna give this guy the stereotypical accent that they want him to have. Um, Hi, I'm trying to connect my iPod to my stereo. Okay, do you have a receiver, a small shelf box, <laughs> or a boom box? Sorry, who is he calling? Who did you call? <laughs> like, who were you supposed to, like, you just wanna connect your iPod to a stereo? Like. What do you call Apple or the the boom? I guess the boombox people, the geek, the geek squad. Maybe you call the. Do we still have? Is the geek squad still a thing? Also, iPod. What year is it? So she asked him if he has an aux plug. Yes, there is a small round plug that says aux. Okay, that's easy. All you need is a 3.5 millimeter male to male RCA cable. Huh? Male to male, as in boy to boy. <laughs> Clarification doesn't even make any sense. Boy to boy isn't like synonymous with anything that male to male isn't. Yes, it's just referring to whether it's a plug or a receptor of a plug. Well, you are just disgusting. Fellas, is it gay to listen to music? Click. Haha. She hung up on him. That'll show him that he's bad. Male to male? You mean like boy to boy? That's disgusting. Frankly, I'm more of a Bluetooth guy. I shouldn't judge, I shouldn't judge. This comic is by far my favorite, so I saved it for last. Commercial break. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Let me be frank, YouTube audience. I love putting sound in my ears. Lucky for me, I recently got a hold of Raycon's new Everyday E25 earbuds, and they do just the trick. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, excellent bass, and a compact design, Raycon earbuds are a great choice for working from home, working out, and just listening to stuff. Music. All for about half the price of those other premium wireless earbuds. You know the ones. I'm, I'm not gonna name them here, but you know. What I'm saying is these earbuds are a good deal. My favorite feature of these little guys is the bass, because uh, I'm a bass head. And the isolating fit makes other sounds jealous, because they can't get into your ears anymore. <laughs> what, uh, what was that? I can't hear you over the isolating fit. Convinced? I thought so. Mosey on over to buyraycon.com slash Jarvis, that's my name, for 15% off your order. I'll wait. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now, 
back to the funny pages. Working as a manager for a retail electronics business, I have a customer come in with a DVD player. I know they're illustrating them in, like this came out in December of 2019, but these stories are clearly written for a different time because like who is getting a DVD player serviced in like 2020? This DVD player doesn't work. It won't play my DVDs. Can I get an exchange? Well, did you buy it here? <laughs> Just trying to like barter. <laughs> I got a broken DVD player. Can I have a working one please? Well, let's see if I can get it to work. What is this? What is this movie that's playing in the background with this very angry looking man? I take the DVD player over to the AV wall and quickly hook it up to our system. Why would you plug in his DVD player to the whole, to the whole system? <laughs> that seems just like uh, wrong. <laughs> that seems dumb. Oh, here's the problem. It seems that the disc somehow ended upside down in the DVD player. <laughs> That's the problem? You mean to tell me that this guy is so stupid that he didn't know that he put a DVD upside down? I flip the DVD over without even looking at the disc or anything and push it back in, turning back to the customer. <laughs> I knew something wasn't quite right. I didn't check the DVD that was in the DVD player. I didn't try to <laughs> flip it to the other side. Now check a bow bow. That's not bow check a wow wow I thought. Like wow wow, not bow bow. Come on guys. <laughs> Suddenly coming up on all my TVs, blaring through the sound system that is usually playing a music DVD, comes blasting a rather grotesque scene of a cheesy porn. <laughs> so he plugged in this man's DVD to the entire store and it starts playing a porn, which is already like kind of unbelievable. And then for some reason he wants to like point out that it's a grotesque scene and the porn is cheesy. Like it wasn't even a tasteful porn guys. Can you believe my misfortune? <laughs> By the time the first customer turned around to see what was going on, I had the AV cables yanked. Oh, that's where that DVD went, huh? Okay, all fixed. Need me to help put this back in the box for you? No thanks, I can do it. They, they're all talking like Morty from Rick and Morty now in my head. No thanks, I can do it. Thanks for all your help. <laughs> that took me by surprise because uh, it was apparently about the guy working in tech support uh, and not, <laughs> the grown man who, who in 2020 doesn't know how to use a DVD player and owns porn on DVD? Should I bleep porn? In conclusion, these comics have good intentions, uh, but between you and me, they are not having the desired effect. It's not like these comics are harmful or anything. They're just goofy as hell. And I, I just thought it would be fun to talk about them. Also, what is everyone's fascination with, with stories being real? You're allowed to make things up. Just don't say that it's real. <laughs> fictional stories are fine. Some of my favorite stories are fictional stories, like uh, Hamilton. Well, I can't think of any examples, but I assure you uh, that fiction is good and you're allowed to do it. Um, just, just don't say that it's not fiction. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks to ghostcat326 for sending me a message on Instagram that inspired this video. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. If you want me to butcher your name, so do the things in the places, everyone. And stay, stay safe out there, Wildcat.